from a secret location in Hollywood, it's the, 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 the Tom Likas Show. Oh my God. And now, and now, here he is, Tom Likas. In this hour of the program, I want to talk to you about somebody I had a conversation with who uh, said something that could easily be construed as racist. And yet I'm willing to bet there are other people out there who don't think it's racist at all. Well, we'll see who thinks what. A Caucasian said, and I was within earshot, the following. He said, All right, we're going to elect Barack Obama. Now will the blacks just shut up about all that other stuff? Stop with the reparations. I'm just quoting. Stop with the reparations. Stop with the 40 acres and a mule. Stop with the complaining about racism. All right. Can you really say that we're a racist country if we're willing to elect a black guy president? Now, I think we can still be a racist country and elect a black guy president for any number of reasons. One, because he's a half black guy and a half white guy. And I think a lot of people are aware of that. And one of the reasons they're comfortable with Barack Obama, just an opinion on my part. And uh, electing a black guy, even though he is uh, an extraordinary individual... Uh, doesn't mean that uh, people won't act the same way about other black people. It is possible to have a black president and still have us be a racist country or to have racism in our country. But there appears to be a certain amount of sentiment out there asking this question. And if you are African American, you may or may not be aware of it, but I'm bringing it up because I bring these things up and I'm not afraid of bringing these things up. So, yes, a Caucasian said to me, look, all right, we're going to elect Obama. Can they shut up now about all the racism? Can they shut up? You know, are we really racist if we elect a black guy? I don't think so, the guy said. I think it proves with that, that whatever, whatever racism ever existed, it's done now. Okay, this is the end right here. This is the end of the line. This is gonna shut up the Al. Sh this has got to shut up the Al Sharptons and the Jesse Jacksons. It's gonna put them out of business. Because how can you complain about racism if we elect the black guy? All right. So uh, I don't care if you're black or white. What is your reaction to that? Tom Likas. One eight hundred five eight hundred Tom. Tom Likas. One eight hundred five eight hundred eight six six. The Tom Likas Show. The Tom Likas Show, one 800 800 tom That's the telephone number. I, I heard somebody say that uh, this was a Caucasian. I heard somebody say that uh, if we elect Obama, that black people should just shut up about racism. Okay? Stop. It's 1-800-5-800-TOM. That's our telephone number. And, uh... Let's say hello here to uh, mm, Mike on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Hi, Tom. Hi. First time caller, long time listener. Thank you. Um, I'm happy to hear you uh, doing things uh, very relevant again. Thank you. What should I say? Should I tell you what I called about right away? But No, no. Why don't you wait a while? Uh, I tell you what, uh, we'll just take a little time out here, and then we'll give that some thought, okay? Okay, Tom. Okay, good. All right, tell me what you called about. Okay, well, you you said that uh, people think that uh, because of electing Obama, that that means we're no, not I, racist. No, I'm talking about one particular person, though I suspect it represents a lot of people. Yeah, well, I, I think it does represent a lot of people, because I, I hear people say, well, I'm not racist because I don't use a uh, certain language to describe people, and then they start to ridicule people because of their race. 
But they say, oh, I don't use uh, a vulgar word, and so that means I'm not a racist. I think some people think that that's all that racism is, is a name-calling. And they don't understand that uh, uh, judging people as a group is uh, is ignorant. All right, so you're saying that you disagree with the person who said this, that uh, even if we elect a black guy to be president, America is still racist. I think I think it is, but I think that this is a, a great step forward. I, I, I'm, I'm happy to see uh, that, that uh, a black person is making this level of achievement. All right, thank you for that. Anthony on the Tom Likas Show, hello. Uh, yes, what's going on, Tom? Not much, Anthony. Hey, man, hey, big fan, man, listen frequently, man. Thank you. Hey, uh, I, I, I could understand why, you know, man, somebody would say something like that, you know what I mean? Because, you know, it is getting, you know, black people, uh, you know, as a, as a race or, you know, a whole, you know, getting, you know, people more interested, more involved, making them feel like, uh, you know, they can be, you know, more involved in the politics and, you know, maybe, you know, it'll, you know, you know, give them some hope, you know what I mean, about, you yeah. know, maybe change to come. You know what I'm talking about? Uh-huh. I mean, you know, I, I can't even fault them for that. You know what I mean? Times we live in, you know, it's crazy. So uh, after Barack uh, and again, I'm going back to what this person said. So if Barack Obama wins, what about people who talk about reparations and, uh, you know, or the, you got your uh, Al Sharptons and Jesse Jacksons? Will this put them out of business? What's the deal? I mean, you know, a lot of people would argue that, you know, that that is what's keeping them in business. I mean, you know, uh, the quote unquote, you know, uh, problems with with uh, black people and how they're treated politically, uh, socially. You know what I mean? Uh, I, I think that, you know, that is what is keeping them going. So uh, if, uh, you know, uh, some sort of man in office. I mean, what more could they say unless, you know, maybe Baraka doesn't do the things that maybe he promised that, you know, people would, you know, want. You know what I mean? I understand. Anthony, thank you. Jay on the Tom Likas show. Hello. How's it cracking, Tom? Oh, someone's ass will be cracking since I get out of here. Yeah, I'm right behind you on that one. Hey, uh. <laughs> I'm right behind somebody else on that one. Yeah, Fro Freudian slip there. You caught me. Bleh. Hey, uh. This whole uh, racism deal, regardless of Obama makes it or not, everybody just needs to quit with it and shut up about it. Actually, if Obama does become president, that's just all the more reason we need to quit with the whole thing. If Obama wins and if Obama loses, you don't want to hear about it anyway. I don't want to hear about it anyway. I mean, just the fact that he's he's risen to the level he's risen proves that, you know, you do the right things in life. You study you be a participant in society rather than sitting on the street corner with a 40 in your hand or something. Obviously, things work out for you. So, you know, just the fact that he's made it as far as he has, that just pretty much tells us all we don't need to talk about it. Now, hey, you go deep south. Actually, when I was in high school, I lived in Alabama for a couple of years. There's pockets of this country. You're never going to get them into the modern age, and that's just the way it is. There's just no way around that. Jay, thank you for that. Here comes David on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Hi, Tom. Hi, David. Well, I'm a white guy married to a black woman with mixed kids, and racism is alive and well. So uh, what about what this person said? Well, hey, if we elect Obama, that's an indicator that it's dead. Oh, that's it's no, it's not. It's an indicator that we have enough progressive people these days that can clearly see that the Republican Party has been lying to us for eight plus years and making a sham of what this country used to stand for. I think that's really what they're saying. And Obama just happens to be the right person at the right time. And uh, I, you know, I really think this came down to with the Democratic situation. Well. Do we want a woman or a black? And now McCain chooses Palin, and it's back again. Do we want a woman or a black guy? Because people really aren't focusing on McCain. They're focusing on Palin. And a, a lot of women that I speak to uh, just think Palin is just a, a slap in their face. So uh, Obama is going to win by default, even though he really has the credentials, I believe, to make change. But you don't think that uh, it's going to be that much change? In in other words, uh, 
you don't agree with the guy who said shut up about racism? Oh, not at all. Not at all. Because I, we had to teach our kids that you're going to be followed in stores because you're perceived as black because you're mixed. You're going to be stopped by police for no reason. These things are going to happen. I mean, I grew up in an all-black neighborhood, kind of reverse discrimination, if you will. And now I live in a predominantly white neighborhood. And it, it, it truly is the way that it is. And you have your head buried in the sand if you think it's different. And most white people don't understand that because they're not faced with that but when you're raising a child that's mixed you're, you're truly raising a black child at that point and you look at things through a different set of glasses thank you david here comes jason on the tom like show hello hi how you doing tom doing great jason um i think that it's a, a very racist uh um idea to believe that one black um, person uh, regardless of his intelligence uh speaks for the race to assume that uh, Barack Obama getting elected is going to change uh, black America is ridiculous. Well, I don't think that's what the person was saying, and I'm not defending what they said. I think just what they're saying is the fact that a black guy could get elected indicates that racism is in decline or that it's dead, and therefore he doesn't want to hear about it anymore. Well, I think you can look at uh, how, clo well, how close it was uh, earlier on. Um, between McCain and Obama in the polls, I think that would prove uh, that it's still that racism is still alive and well in, um, in the United States. Because uh, I mean, if you're voting with your pocket, Obama should be the uh, the the right choice. But because there's still uh, a big um, race issue in America, he's uh, you know it's um, what five percent that he's up now or nine percent? I don't know. It should, be a, it should be a blowout right now. Don't know, but uh, I do think Obama is going to win big in the Electoral College, that's for sure. Okay, well, uh, could you take me out uh, Bill O'Reilly style? Yes, yes, I can, Jason. I can't okay. do it. Okay. We'll do it live. Okay. We'll, no. we'll do it live! F it. Do it live! I can, I'll write it and we'll do it live! Right. F***ing thing sucks! By the way, Factor for Kids, available at Amazon.com. Bill O'Reilly knows about raising children with class and dignity. You can learn how to raise kids just like he would recommend. The way he would have it. 1-800-5800-TOM, that's our telephone number. You know, uh, Bill O'Reilly would never date a spinner. Because he's in the no-spin zone. That's right. A.B. on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Tom, how you doing? Doing okay, A.B. Hey, it's A.D. Oh, A.D. Um, uh, it says A.B. on the screen. I just read it off the screen. No worries. So I have an opinion. I believe that what was said in and of itself is a racist comment because racism is about power. You can't negate 400 years of racism by saying, oh, well, look who's in power in terms of the presidency and say that, oh, we're on the decline. It, to me just smacks in the face of what racism is all about. And, uh, you know, as a black man, it's it's kind of like, you know, you're not seeing the entire walk that the racism that has been happening. You know, he had a caller that just mentioned he grew up in a black neighborhood and he felt racism. Well, he was in the majority, you know. So it's to me like when somebody says, oh, I have a, uh, I have a golf partner, I have a friend, he's black, so I'm not a racist. But that same individual will go to an office where none of the, the executives that are in power are of any color. You know, but no, I'm not a racist. So wait, wait, well, wait a minute. Going to an office where the executives are uh, are white, if they're all white, uh, what are you supposed to do, quit your job over that? No, no, not to say that, but I'm just saying that you have to look around and say, okay, who is in power ultimately? I mean, look at the majority of the power positions in the United States. And if you say that one person has elevated to a position of power now, it's not a problem. I mean, there's been intelligent black men in the past, Frederick Douglass, for example. Now, people point to him and say, well, he was such an intelligent black man. You know, look, we, we, we aren't racist. We've, we've let this person elevate himself to this level. It's not that way. You know, it's, there's a lot of people struggling based on the color of their skin. It's not, you know, something that you want to have go away just because you're not going to talk about it because it, it needs to be talked about. It needs to be resolved. A.D., thank you for that. Jerry on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Hello. Yes. Is this Tom? Last I looked. 
Hey, Tom, this is Jerry, man. Long time listener, first time caller. Thank you, Jerry. Right here on the 405 North, headed back into the valley, trying to get home, and uh, I listened to your show. And uh, let me see if I get this straight. You were in a, in a coffee shop, and you overheard somebody talking about... Um, no, uh, this is somebody who I have met and who I have known on and off, who uh, has a big mouth. Okay, well, let me tell you where I'm coming from. I was raised in Tennessee, just outside of Nashville. My parents were extremely racist. And I've learned to grow tolerant. But my opinion on the whole situation is that as long as the media continues to twist stories that blacks will no, never be seen as equal as whites. You understand what I'm saying? So it doesn't matter how much progress they make. There are tons of smart African Americans, uh, like the gentleman earlier said earlier about Frederick Douglass. Now, now one, one could argue that none of them ever became president. You're not. Barack is a highly intelligent man. He, uh, he said, I believe he said earlier he went to Harvard. Um, it doesn't matter what happens, they will never feel equal because of how our media twists everything and spews everything out. It's because of the media. In my opinion, I believe so. You turn on the radio, you turn on the t television every night, and you hear about you hear about everything, but everything seems so much worse when a black man does. Hi, right, Jerry. Thank you for that. I appreciate the call. It's one eight hundred five eight hundred Tom. That's our telephone number. It's Derek on the Tom Likas show. Hi, Derek. How you doing, Tom? Doing okay. I just want to throw something at you. I think what's got everybody's BVDs and a big twist over this is, is based on something I heard when I got out of college. And that is this society has a problem with someone who is young, black, intelligent, all three at the same time. Now, one could argue, let me, let me throw this at you. One could argue that if society had such a problem with that, why would they elect him president, which it looks like we're about to do. Because the problem, I'll tell you why. He is everything that, there, this country is at a dilemma. Obama is everything you want in a candidate. He's bright, good looking, intelligent, vivacious, ideas, hopeful. He reminds you of a Kennedy. And so the people, they, the, the thing is sitting right in front of your face. Either you get something or someone with that promise, or you get someone that every time you look at them, and you see them, you feel like you've lost hope. That is, that's where this country is right now. And so? Well, they, they have no choice. This country is at a point, this country has reached a point where they have to make good. They've been talking it for 200 years about opportunity, and if you find a, a minority that is qualified, we'll elect him. Well, you've got one. So now you've got to put up or shut up or forever. You can never make that claim about this country. Yeah. Well, he is certainly the uh, smartest person to run for president in the last 20 years. I agree. I agree. So I think that's the biggest you know, problem. Why I don't I don't think, you know, I think people are saying racism and they're using that to express their surprise, their denial. But the truth of the matter is. Obama is the closest thing that you have seen in the last, at least in my lifetime, and I'm 53, that has some type of promise, some type of ability to empower people and give people hope. And the people are stunned by it. If he was any, if he was white, he, I think, I really believe if he was Asian or any other, any other nationality, it would be easier for them to accept it. But because the stigma of black, and the fact that he has blown all that out of the water, now they've got something. They've got to take a look at this again. And it's just like digesting a meal. They're having a problem digesting it, but time is running out, and they've got to make a choice. I understand, Derek. Thank you for that. It's 1-800-5800-TOM. That's our telephone number here. Let's say hello to Chris on the Tom Likas show. Hey, Tom. Thanks for having me on. Sure. Uh, just want to... Throwing a few brief things. Love what you're doing here. Uh, 
I just wanted to mention that if we're going to talk about race today in America, I think that a lot of people don't look at one of the things that I find most important, and uh, my father is a school teacher, and I've done a lot of reading on it, and that's the kind of sort of the resegregation of public schooling in America. Now, do you think that is a reality and a bad thing? Do you think it's a reality and, as some people say, a good thing? I think it's a reality, and I think it's a horrible thing. And uh, I am not an expert on it, but I urge everyone to go out and either get uh, Shame of a Nation or Savage Inequality. And the name of the author slips me not right now, but go ahead and Amazon those books, and it, uh, it's by an educator who's done a lot of research into this. And I think it's horrible that by by refusing to acknowledge that we've had racial issues in the past and by trying to put these aside, we've ended up with a system that still neglects children and still separates them and sort of worsens, I think, these racial tensions. Interesting. So that's, that's all I wanted to throw out there for your readers, just in case they were looking on more more information in this matter. But I love what you're doing and uh, definitely looking for Obama to get elected this, this fall. You are. Yeah, absolutely. All right. Well, I'm glad to hear that. I'm voting for it. One eight hundred five eight hundred Tom. That's our telephone number. Jarrett on the Tom Likas show. Hello. Hey Tom. Hey. Um, you know, I'm 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 twenty years old. You know, I come from a smaller town, and you know, even in like you know the smaller town atmosphere, you still see like kind of if not racism, then definitely a slanting towards you know towards the you know wider majority type of thing and like the things that go on there. And, you know, it's it's all, I mean, even in, like, you know, all the research that's been done on how if you have an ethnic name, it's a lot harder to get stuff like loans. And, you know, like, in, in my school, you know, in the schooling systems I went into, you know, there was kind of a school that was in a blacker part of the neighborhood, and, like, there was two other schools, but there was only one high school in the entire town. And, you know, it was like, there's this one, it was an elementary school, you know, like 300 kids or whatever, and, like, most of them were black. And yet, when I went to high school, to this one high school, there was five black people graduating with me. The rest of the people were predominantly white. And so, you know, if that can happen, and it happens every year, you know, every year, the numbers of people that are graduating, are, you know, who are black from my high school are like, you know, three, four, five, wherein, you know, you have 60 or 90 people per grade when we first start now. And, you know, and, and the people who are coming out of that school are always testing a lot lower. You know, they're always getting put in remedial classes. And if you have that kind of, you know, that kind of thing happening, I don't think I don't think that like anyone like Obama could do anything about it. Well, one could also argue that Obama was not rich, and uh, Obama managed to go to Harvard Law School and end up first in his class. Yeah, yeah, that's true. But I mean, you can also argue that, like, you know, maybe he had, maybe he had some help. You know, maybe he caught the eye of, you know, some teacher who was really, you know, helping them. You know, really, really pushing them. But if you grow up, I mean, the place where I went to, I mean, the teachers had just given up. You know, all of them were actively searching, trying to find different positions in different schools. You know, it was kind of like a, you know, I'm only here because I have to be, not because I love teaching. You know, it was just, it was really bad. Well, Jared, thank you for that perspective. I appreciate it. It's one eight hundred five eight hundred tom That's our telephone number. This is John on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Hey, John. Uh, hey, Tom. How's it going? Doing Okay. Hey, I want to comment on that guy who called in earlier and said racism isn't still alive in America because we're about to have a black president. I'm sorry. He's way off, okay? I'm I'm from the South, okay? Where I'm from, if you walk down the street and you're white at night, people people wave at you, oh, hi, how are you? But if I walk down the street or another black guy walks down the street, women want to clutch their purses, people locking their doors, running back into their houses. I'm sorry, racism is still alive in America. And it's never going to change. I mean, there will always be some sort of racism. Look, every time an Arab goes through the, the, through the airport and he walks through a scanner, he gets a random search. That ain't, that ain't random. They do that on purpose, Tom. There we I go. I mean, it's, it, no matter what, there will always be racism. Whether or not we want it or we don't, there will always be racism in America. 
simply because of the way you look. Now, let me ask you this question. Does the fact that uh, we're about to elect a black president change anything? I, I truly don't believe so. Okay. He could be white. You know, he could be white and and get elected, John McCain. He thinks that he's going to get elected. You know, that guy probably owns slaves or something, uh, as old as he is. Um, but seriously, it's just, it's not right, you know, that, that the man wants to say that because Barack Obama's black that, oh, you know, racism is going to die out. It's not true. He's got a he's got an Arab middle name. People are are all oh he's Muslim, you know. Uh, he, people see an Asian person driving. Oh, I bet they can't drive. Well, they're gonna get in an accident. <laughs> I mean, it's it's just it's the method of thinking that people have, and I, I truly don't believe it will change. All right, John. Thank you for that. It's half past the hour. The Tom Like is show at one eight hundred five eight hundred Tom. Talking about a guy who uh, was saying with me with an earshot. Uh, hey, we're about to elect Obama. Is it time for everybody to shut up about racism? Shut up! We're electing a black guy. Come on, stop it. That's what he said. What do you think, Montrell? I'm the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Hey, what up, Tom? How you doing, man? I'm doing okay. Yeah, man. I'm, you know, I'm a me young, me young African American dude, and you know, my parents always taught me, you know, never play the play the race factor. Go out and get it, you know, no matter what, no matter what skin color you are, but. I just think, like, racism is going to always be alive, you know, no matter what, man, whether it's getting pulled over unnecessarily, whether it's just getting just anything. I just think, you know, racism still going to be alive, you know, and like one of your callers said, you know, like, yes, we are, you know, a lot of people are, you know, coming to vote for a black guy to become president, but I think, like you said, like, after eight years of Bush, like, damn, it was either the black guy or the woman. So, you know, like, most of them didn't want to go for the woman, so they said, let me go for the black guy, you know, so... Like I said, man, Tom, you know, racism is, is always going to be alive, like I said, but I don't think that that's right to play, like, a race card or say, like, oh, yeah, this happened to me because I'm black, you know? Like, I, I don't never play that. You know, my parents always told me, you know, don't play that, you know, don't don't use race as anything, you know? Like, and as far as, like, Al Sharpton and Jesse Jackson, like, F them, dude, because, like, I would never want them to represent me in anything ever in my life, you know? Just because for the simple fact, I think those guys always play the race card and, you know, no matter what, even when we get, even when Obama gets in, I think Jesse Jackson and and the other dude, I think they're going to even just feed off that even more. You know, just to get things even going even more. Thank you for that, Montrell. Appreciate the call. One eight hundred five eight hundred Tom. That's our telephone number. Taylor on the Tom Like His Show. Hello. Hey Tom, long time, second time. Thank you. Uh, you know what? Let's take a state like Pennsylvania, for example. Uh, that state has been hit hard by the economy, obviously. Um, the people there have, have uh, you know, notoriously voted Democratic. Their governor is a Democrat. Um, their senator is a Democrat. Uh, but still, the state is running 50-50. Now, I can't come, out with, come up with a logical explanation other than uh, race or national ethnicity has something to do with it. It has something to do with it. Because the country is messed up, and why would anyone who's voted Democratic in the past vote for another Republican after we've basically almost screwed up the country and all of our assets the last eight years? Well, that's true. So, I mean, take that. And, and I, you know, like, I, I would have to say that until I see at, at least 60-40 going for Obama here in the general election... I can't say that there's no racism involved because Bill Clinton was a great president. I think Bill Clinton running against Barack Obama now, if we go back to 92, if Bill Clinton was running against Obama, Clinton would lose because Obama is a phenomenal candidate. And I don't, I don't think there's any candidate in the last 40 years that could, do, that could beat Obama. What do you think about that, Mr. Likas? Well, I think Obama's going to win. I have no uh, doubt at this point. I, I had doubts, uh, you know, two, three, four weeks ago. But ever since the stock market has started to crater, uh, I think it pretty much has uh, locked up the election for Obama by this time. I really and do I, believe that. You know, Tom, I've been telling people, I, I don't care if you're a Republican or Democrat, I can't see how you can vote for a Republican in 2008. I, 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 if Republicans say, you know, I'm, I'm, a, I'm a conservative, a moderate conservative. I've usually I voted for Kerry, but I could say that if Republicans say that they love this country and and country first, then why are they voting for eight more years 
of the same BS, Tom. I, I don't understand that. If you love this country, it's time for Obama. He's obviously the better candidate. Not, you know, boy, you're preaching the choir here, Taylor. Thank you very much, Tom. Thank you. Appreciate the call. Tom. Like is 1-800-5800-866. Tom. The Tom Likes Show. It's the Tom Likes Show. 1-800-5800-TOM. That's our telephone number. Thank you for tuning in. Thanks for being part of our program. We appreciate it. And, uh... What I enjoy when we discuss politics is the fact that uh, so many of you uh, respond when we have an articulate, intelligent conversation on the air. Many of you like to write in and respond in kind, and uh, I always enjoy intelligent feedback like this one from Christina Maria V., who writes and it says, Finally, you showed your true color. You are a crying bitch liberal. You and that evil Jew-run station, 97.1, are finally going down. You will lose you base with you sissy bitch liberal view, you fat, ugly, filthy Jew. You will now see how many listeners leave you for supporting that black bastard, Obama. All you Jews will suffer, you especially. You no talents, fat F. Ha, 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 ha. Tom is a liberal. Ha, 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 ha. You are on the same side as Babs, Penn, Clooney, Bin Laden. All you evil liberal Jews will rot in hell, especially that Jew Bin Laden. That Jew Osama Bin Laden. Yeah. Ha, 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 ha. Tom is a liberal. Ha, 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 ha. Poor bitch Jew. Ha, 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 ha. Christina with no H, Christina Maria V at AIM.com. I'm sure many of you would love to uh, hook up with a chick like that. <laughs> it's one 800 Thank you, Christina Maria. Thank you so much. one 800 800 tom That's our telephone number. <laughs> I love intelligent discourse. Lisa on the Tom Likas show. Hello. Hi, Tom. Hi. I love you and your show. Thank you. And Dino's awesome, too. I already told him. <laughs> oh, yes. Well, I just wanted to say that I believe having a black president will help over time, since the children today will be watching and viewing a black family in the White House. So instead of only seeing an all-white family on TV every day, we'll now be exposed to a black family living in the eye of the public. Yes. So I think over time, the, this will help the racism. Over time. Yeah. I don't know if it will happen right away, but at least the children now will start to see, you know, black families on TV, you know, not just the the crappy TV shows that are out right now. And my husband is from Alabama, so I understand why all the callers are saying so much from the South. I think it can be compared to even the racism people have here in California for Mexicans, unfortunately. Well, uh, that's certainly true there, Lisa. Thank you for that. 1-800-5800-TOM. That's our telephone number. Justin on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Hey, what's up, Dad? Uh, not much, son. All right. Well, uh, all I wanted to say is, you know, everybody's saying about the racism thing and all that, but racism isn't a white thing. It's not a black thing. It's not a Mexican thing. It's every race thing. You know, it's not everybody's acting like it's all about whites against blacks, and it's not. There's racism in every race against every other race. All it is is it's the intelligence of people that cause racism. I mean, if you're intelligent, no matter what ratio, you're not going to be falling into all that racism. It's only, you know, the ignorant and stupid and lazy that believe in all of it. And, uh, you know, whether Obama gets voted in or McCain does, all I got to say is, you know, Government's proven no matter who's in office, really. Neither one kills too much about the little people. They all watch each other's backs. So I don't see what the point is of even talking about all of it. So you don't even care? No, I don't. Okay, Justin, thank you for that. 1-800-5800-TOM is our telephone number. It's Bob on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Hey, Tom, how you doing? Doing great, Bob. 
Fantastic. Big fan. So I just want to address this uh, particular issue regarding Obama. You know, he's, he is an intelligent candidate. Um, the problem I have when you're talking about racism is the fact that racism will always exist. It will exist no matter, you know, if a black president is elected or, you know, a Mexican president is elected or an Asian president. It doesn't matter. Racism will always exist. And the problem that I, I feel that, um, and I'm seeing all around me, I'm a minority um, in Los Angeles. I mean, we, we live in a melting pot here. And you see tons and tons, for example, of white people with huge banners in their, in their lawns, with, you know, people who are not even politically active, jumping on this bandwagon. And I really think that there is this anti-racism vote that's going towards Obama. I really do. I see that in cars. I see that bumper stickers all around. And, uh, you know, regardless of if, 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 if a black president or another type of minority president is, is, is elected, there is going to be racism. What people have to accept is that there, racism will exist, and we just have to deal with it. You don't have to, you know, there, there, there are certain minorities that, that dwell upon it, and, and it, unfortunately it inhibits their ability to, to be productive in society. And I think we just have to accept it and move on. Move forward. Um, that's that's my take on it. What do you think? Well, I, I agree with you that there'll always be racism in one form or another. Uh, but certainly, we've come a long way from the days when black people couldn't vote. We've come a long way from the days when uh, black people couldn't sit in the front of the bus. We've come a long way from the days we had separate schools, separate drinking fountains, separate hotels, separate restaurants. And we've come a long way when a black man can be uh, the head of his class at Harvard Law School and run for president and win. I mean, we've made a lot of progress. I don't think the election of any one politician is going to eliminate racism. But uh, I've seen a lot of great changes I in my lifetime, and I hope it keeps going. That's all I can say. The problem is, is that changes will, whatever changes have occurred, and I do agree with you, we have come a long ways, they'll never be good enough for certain people. Never. And, no, you know, this issue can, you know, I mean, have the entire Congress be black, and it's still going to be a racism issue. This is the, the, the bottom line is that racism doesn't go away. We live in a melting pot society. We live in America in which it was made up of, of immigrants, and there's always going to be stereotypes. There's always going to be ill feelings. But the bottom line is, is we have to move forward and, and stop talking about this racism issue. Uh, Bob, we're never going to stop talking about it. That's one thing I think is uh, pretty certain, whether it still exists or not. 1-800-5800-TOM, that's our telephone number. Chris is calling from Portland, Oregon, home of the other white meat on the Tom Likas show. Hello. Hey, how's it going? Great. Uh, I called in to talk about uh, the other side of racism, and I kind of wanted to get your take on it. So we already know it's okay not to have any negative associations with other races, but... If I, let me keep it within my race. If I was going to say white people can't play basketball, there would nobody be would nobody be outraged about that. Um, I think if we really want to eliminate racism, it should become saying a positive racist thing about somebody is still racism. It's just positive racism. I want to know what your take on that. Well, was. yeah, that's true. That's certainly true. Uh, it's like the show we did recently with all the people who are, who say, "Oh, you know, there's a black guy. I want to ask him what he thinks about Obama." <laughs> Yeah, no, uh, that's definitely true. I mean, you know, if you go to the Intel campus, you, uh, I'm sure you're aware that there is one here. I know you've had some shows here. Um, you know, it, I would be lying if I didn't say it wasn't three quarters of guys from India. But um, you know, uh, I don't even know where to go. Um, so. Anyway, Sounds to me <laughs> like you're gone already. But thank you for that, Lee. On the Tom Likas show, hello. Hey Tom, first time caller, long time listener. Cool. And you know what? I don't agree with it, but, you know, the one thing that gets me is, you know, uh, African-Americans are always the first one to claim racism, yet they're the most racist. You know, you'd never hear a white comedian using the N-word. If not, you know, it's all over the front page, all that. Yeah, you can pick up any Chris Rock DVD, any Martin Lawrence DVD, go to any local comedy club, and the first thing that they do is, you know, whites and blacks have differences, but, you know, and then they start calling us honkies, crackers, all that type of stuff. I think if the African Americans are really, you know, upset about racism, you know, they should practice what they preach and stop making fun of other races. 
you know, I'm part, you know, uh, Native American and all that stuff, and we had our land taken away from us, all that type of stuff, but you don't hear us claiming all that. You know, it's basically them saying, you know, give me a handout, give me a handout. When they're not there to better Well, that's stuff. also a generalization, because certainly Barack Obama never asked for a handout. Yeah, but also, too, he's a rarity. You know, I plan on voting for him myself. I'm not a racist or anything like that. But at the same time, it's like, you know, they want racism to end. They want that negative stereotype to end, yet they're the ones that are fueling the fire. All right. Well, Lee, thank you for that. Here comes, uh, well, let's put Lisette on the top like his show. Hello. Hi, Tom. Yes. Hi. I was just calling um, with a quick comment. Um, I really think that if people keep on focusing on race, it gives the idea of racism, a, it gives it power. Well, but, but how, what are, we, are we supposed to pretend people don't think about race? I think that people do end up thinking about race on a you know, on a day-to-day -day basis, absolutely. But I think that, again, and given, given the situation with the politics, I think we should be focusing on the their issues and their ideas more so than, you know, what skin color they are or even their their gender. Well, I, I can tell you uh, that uh, people are going to think about race and they're going to talk about race and they're going to speculate about people's characteristics based on their race, and I don't think there's anything we can do to stop that, good or bad. Our email address, tom at blowmeuptom.com. It's tom at blowmeuptom.com. The Tom Likas Show.